say, say truly this morning, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> we saw your prayers this morning for us as we try to read some scripture, as we try to encourage. And uh, if I can encourage one, why, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we want to study some this morning in the book of 1 Corinthians, and third chapter, turn there. <coughs> Paul is right, church there at Corinth, and he's, he's uh, telling them their situation, and uh, he gets right down to the nitty-gritty of the thing, and uh, this is what this is what that uh, we as God's people, when we have an opportunity to encourage anyone, we need to share these things that Paul has shared with them here. But in chapter 3, in verse 3, he says, For ye are carnal. Mm. And uh, this carnal is worthy, wicked. And he's talking to them. Uh, up above that, he told them what he had fed them with. And of course, we know this morning that. The, the feed that he's given them, the milk is for children, and they're very, uh, they're very weak. But he says, for ye are carnal, for whereas there is among you, these are the things that shows us to be carnal, which is envy, strife, division. Are ye not carnal and, and walk as men? In other words, they don't walk as Christians. Uh, they weren't walking as Christians, and uh, he had fed them the, the weakest stuff he could to try to get them to go in. And uh, this morning, uh, we sometimes feel like that we uh, get in that condition. We feel like that, uh, that uh, it, it's just not, it's just not, uh, we're not able sometimes to continue going. Right. But the thing of it is, God is our Savior. God is our uh, our light. God is uh, all in all. And he will, uh, through Jesus Christ, encourage our hearts and through the Holy Spirit encourage us. And he'll strengthen us. Amen. And this morning, as we as we, took, as we think of one of these things, being carnal, uh, I would uh, ask you this morning, if you would, to turn over to the book of Romans for just a few minutes. We want to read some out of uh, Romans 7. Uh, we can find it with Romans 7, 14, I think it is. Yeah. In verse 7, uh, chapter 7, verse 14, says, For we know that the law is spiritual. And, of course, this, he's saying here this morning that the law was perfect. There was nothing wrong with the law. But the thing of it was, people could not endure the law. They could not hold, keep the law. And so he says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am, and he's saying about himself, I'm carnal. Mm -hmm. I'm wicked. And he's talking about his flesh. And this morning, uh, uh, I, there, it's not no excuse, but the thing of it is, this flesh that we have, is hard to handle. Right. And this flesh is sinful, regardless of what people want to say. And people, uh, some people say when they're saved that their whole body and all is saved. But listen, my body has not been saved. Right. And my body will never be saved until right. after it's dead and after it's paid the sin debt and after it's resurrected, a glorified body, then will it be saved. And this is what he's saying here, but I am carnal soul under sin. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, uh, his body had uh, inherited from Adam and Eve this sin nature, and he says it's soul under sin. And so his old flesh is, is weak, and it's uh, uh, in a bad condition. But he says for in verse 15, for that which I do, I allow not. Now, this is this this morning, and you think about these things that, as we're reading them to you because out here in lifetime and, and through the days, listen, the flesh will get the upper hand of you, mm -hmm. and it will tempt you, and it will, it will stir you in the way to take care of the flesh 
instead of the spirit and it will it will conjure up things that will cause you to to lie it will cause you to think thoughts that you shouldn't it'll think you to do all of these things and listen we as god's people need to control this flesh the best we can and i'm i'm not saying that you can be uh can control it perfectly but we as God's people need to think upon our condition from day to day and from Amen. morning to morning. And listen, before we ever hit the floor with our feet, this, we need to ask God this, to, to, to take care of us and to guide us and direct us through the, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need, we need that assurance before we ever get started in the day. And if we possibly can, we need to get into God's Word and, and pray earnestly that He will lead us, that He will direct us, that He will give us something each day to help guide us. Because, listen, the devil has already got it. He's mm -hmm. got it for the flesh. And he's, it's there and it, it stays there. And our, our, our flesh is weak. And so he says, for that which I do, and that was, this is, this is, talking about Paul's condition, I allow not for what I would that I do not, but what I hate that do I. And this morning he was talking about the flesh doing what he hated. And what he loved is the, is the, the spirit of God. And that's what he wanted to follow. And that's what he wanted to do. But so many times Paul, even Paul, he says would, would get by, get out of the will of the Lord and do these things. So he says, if then, in verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law, or I agree to the law that it is good. Well, the law, the law was good, but the thing of it was, Paul couldn't keep it, you can't keep it, and I Amen. can't keep it. And so he says, now then, it is no more I that do it. Now the I that he's talking about here is the spiritual part of Paul. And he says, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And that is the flesh. And the flesh, as I've mentioned before, the flesh is not saved. The flesh is Amen. not going to stand before God in this fleshly body if you're saved. And, and try to give an account because... It cannot do it. Right. But the spirit will give an account, and the flesh will come later, as it's when it's resurrected and risen as a glorified body. It will have paid the sin debt, and will stand before God justified. Amen. And then the two will come together, and there'll be one glorified body, soul, spirit, body, and all, and we can enjoy the the beauties of heaven. We can enjoy being around other saved people completely. There will not be no envy and strife Amen. and things in, in our hearts in heaven. And so we'll have a perfect being. Now he says here in verse uh, 17, Now then it is no more I that dwell that do it, but the sin that dwells in me. Now he says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So Amen. you can... You can take Paul's word and you can take it because Jesus Christ and God authorized him to, and called him and give him this to write down to you and to me to guide us that when these things happen, we would know what was going on and we could put a, we could try to put a stop to this old flesh and what it has and wants to do. So he says, for I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, Amen. for to will or to obey is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Amen. And the word good is, is mean perfect. And he says, I, I just, I can't find a way to do good because the, the flesh is always there to hinder me. And I go out here and preach a sermon to someone or I teach a class to someone. And listen, the devil is always there fighting me. He's fought me oh, in, this, in this. And he fights me every Sunday and Saturday and Friday about trying to get a lesson together. And he, he continually stays on my back. And listen, when I, when I walk up that aisle to try to teach this lesson, people, listen, I just say, Lord, you've got to do it. 
because right. I can't do it. And if what whatever I say or whatever I read, I pray that the Lord will take it and use it for his honor and his glory. Amen. And he will. So here he says here in verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now is I, now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And he's talking about I as being one, and then he's talking about I as being the other. And he's, he's saying here this morning, and we'll see here, he's, there's, a, there's a warfare going on in his body, and there's a warfare going on in our bodies, Amen. and there's a warfare going on in the world. And the Lord God of heaven, when he, when he come to this earth and he seen his boy, there was a warfare then because, listen, he said, let there be light. Amen. That darkness was over the, over the earth, and there was, there, was a, there was a thing that, that, that was against light, but he said it divided the darkness from the light. And so this morning, our old bodies is about like the world was when God appeared. It's a, it's a constant warfare of darkness and light. And when God said, let there be light, listen, it comprehended it not. It didn't understand what was going on. But listen, it's the same with us. But this morning, we have God's word to let us know what is going on in our bodies. Amen. And it's a constant, it's a constant, it's a constant warfare every day of our lives. And so here he says in the verse, in verse uh, 20 uh, or 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Mm. And he's saying this morning, if I want to try to get up here and teach a Sunday school lesson and try to be a blessing and try to be a help that there's always something here there's always something in within me that's hindering me from trying to do what I want to do right and listen I can go out here in the world in this body and I can I think upon these things and this things that's going on and I want this and I want that well, the, the Holy Spirit is within me, and it's saying, hey, you be careful. You watch out. Don't do that. And that's the warfare that's going on in our bodies this morning. And so he says, I delight, in verse uh, 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 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Mm -hmm. That is the part that when you were saved, uh, that's the part that got saved. Amen. Your flesh didn't get saved. And you wonder sometimes, well, why do I want to have those stupid, ungodly, evil thoughts and, that come across in my mind? Well, it's because you're, you're dealing with a body that's lost. Right. You're dealing with a sinful creature, and this spirit that comes and dwells and makes its abode with you is fighting that all the time because it's the part to sin, and this old body is the tabernacle for it. And listen, it has to fight against it and try to direct it to do the things that it don't want to do. Right. And that's our condition this morning, people. That's, that's the thing that we have to put up with, and we sometimes... We get to worrying about this and about that. Listen, we don't need to worry about it. We need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, it's in your hands. You do with me what you want to. And listen, I'll, I'll try the best I can, and that's all I can do. And so he said here in verse, verse 22, uh, or, or uh, verse 23, but I see another law in my members, warring, warring, against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members, in my body. Oh, 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 how many times we say this? Oh, 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 what, why do I do these things? He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this flesh? Well, right. I can tell you who's going to deliver you. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And He's going. He, he say if He saved your soul, He's going to deliver you when this when this body lays down and dies and gets ready to pay its sin debt. That spirit of yours that He saved is going to go to be with Him. 
And I don't know what's going to go on up there. I don't know if there's going to be shouting and happiness and, and all of this at this point. I don't know what, what, if the Spirit's going to sit there at the foot of you. I don't know. But to listen, I know this, that one day, one day, Jesus Christ will call these old bodies forth out of the grave, those that are saved. And listen, as they as they come this way, they will be glorified. They right. will be they, they have paid that sin debt by dying, and they'll be glorified, and they'll stand before God. And listen, they're going they're, that that spirit is going to enter into them, and they're going to be a complete, perfect person. And then and then and then we can stand before Amen. God and glorify Him and sing songs of praise to Him, and we will be there throughout, well, we'll be there eternally, and we'll not have no desire whatsoever Amen. To, uh, to join ourselves with anything like this world, because listen, this world is going to be gone. Amen. This world is going to be gone, and I'll tell you what, the book of Revelation tells us this morning that death and hell will, will be taken out and thrown into the, the lake of fire, and listen, that's where this world will go to. Amen. This world is corrupt, and it's going to go right there with them. There's going to be a new, a new earth set down, a new, a new heaven and a new earth come down, and we're going to be there. And Amen. We're going, to, we're going to praise the Lord forever, and it's going to be a hallelujah time. And listen, this old flesh is that stupid. That can't happen forever. You get tired of anything. Listen, that's the flesh for you. Right. That's the flesh for you, and it wants to deceive you. It wants to... Uh, your spirit, it wants to hinder your spirit in any way it can. But listen, that's the way it's going to happen. And so this morning, I want, you to, I want you to think about this. He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of the dead? This death, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh... The law of sin. So don't get down on yourself this morning when you slip up and say something or you, you get get cornered and tell a lie and stuff like this. Listen, that's the flesh for you. You need you need to you need to find it. But listen, these are some of the things that, that the flesh does and it'll bite you. It, it it will come back to bite you and you're gonna to have to give an account for it. But the thing of it is that's what you're dealing with this morning. And he, and he, it's a bar cat. Um, yeah. and, and, and every every day I live, and I've been here over eighty years, and listen, it gets it don't get no better. Mm. People, it don't get no better. The world don't get no better. Yeah. Nobody don't get no better. It just it's just it's a it's a decreasing thing. And one of these days, God will say, "That's it, that's it. You go get my children, Amen. And bring them home, and we'll 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 leave this old earth. We'll." We'll come out of those graves. We'll, we'll, our soul will unite with that, that fleshly body, and we'll be home with him forever. And then we can take a deep breath and say, Thank you, Lord. It's all done and done. And you know, you're, the, you're the one. That, and I'm, I, 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 I hope that I can praise him. I know I'll be able to praise him because he loved me and I love him, and there will be praise forevermore. And Amen. Shout and hallelujah, all the way. And so this this morning is our lesson. Uh, I, I I wanted to uh, get through this and, and listen. There was some. There was another. There was another scripture that I would love to read read to you. And let me look at it and see if I can find my notes because I, I, I eight verse eight uh, chapter eight and verse six. Notice for to be carnally minded is death. Now, what is he saying? The spirit that is saved is not carnally minded. But this flesh that's not saved is carnally minded. And it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. Because the carnal mind is enmity or against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. And so this morning, uh, you, you can take that with a grain of salt and you can, you can think upon it. You in this flesh, me in this flesh, we in this flesh, 
cannot please God. But through the Holy Spirit and through our, our soul that is saved, we can do the things that is pleasing to God. We can offer a praise to him through our, this body, through this mouth, and we can offer praises to him, and we can please him. We can sing songs of praise to him. We can read his word and be pleasing to him. But this old flesh in itself, it don't want to do these things. And it, it, would, it would say fully on it if it could. But we know that the spirit over, overrides the, the, the flesh and keeps it under control, part of it. So that's, that's our lesson this morning, and, and this is something that... Uh, we all need to understand that what Amen. we're dealing with because uh, it's it's not just once in a while occurrence, but it's every day when you open your eyes and get out of bed and you walk through this day, it's it happens and it just keeps happening and the devil don't let up and he's not going to let up because he hate uh, he ain't really the, the the brightest star in hell. Uh, so listen, this morning uh, he thinks he's going he thinks he's going to win, but as the song says, I read the end of the book, and we win. Amen. So that's our yeah. lesson. Thank you so much.